What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku and Adam and I are looking for some squid today. I really want to catch some squid. Adam caught a bunch, you know, a month or two back, but uh, they should still be around. So at least a little bit. So maybe we can catch at least maybe five, ten squid, hopefully more, and eat that squid and maybe use some for live bait as well to catch halibut. Adam says there's some big halibut here, so. All right, we'll see. So first thing I have right here is a squid jig. It's like a sabiki rig, but uh, but for squid. You can check out these. Look at that. Has a little kind of glow in the dark kind of ball on them. And then all the hooks face upwards, they're barbless. And that's kind of what the squid jigs look like. Well, actually, I've never had the fresh caught squid out of here, out of like Northern California. Uh, these ones we're going after today are the small market squid. If everything goes according to plan, I'm gonna do sashimi right here on the kayak. Yeah, is that crazy? I might cut my hand. Well, we'll see, we'll see. Let's go find them first. There's finally something on here. I got one! Yeah! <laughs> I got one! Adam, I got one. Nice! Heck yeah, my first squid! Little guy. Heck yeah, that means they're here. Yes! Alright, let me drop back down. Finally got one. I'm gonna keep him alive. I have this right here it's a crawfish trap since i have a zipper here i could probably tie off both ends and then just uh throw them in from the top all right let's catch more i need more well it wasn't looking so good but finally after about an hour i got one i really want to know how that fresh squid tastes just right out of the water sashimi but i also need bait and i only have one my only solution is to catch more but man it's been like an hour and a half maybe and i caught one a couple months ago they were loaded but not anymore i'm kind of too late these squid they don't fight much so you don't really feel any shakes or anything they just feels like dead weight and i'm just sending it all the way down to the bottom and once it's at the bottom, like that, roll up just a little bit, and then I'm just jigging up and down slowly. And whenever I feel some weight on there, and I try to reel up. Just got another one. Oh, came off. It's right here. Got another one. I, I think I found a school right here. Yes, hopefully this is a school right here. I can see these. You can see that right there, right? You can see the fish finder there. Bunch of little dots. I think that's the squid. All right, I'm gonna try for two more minutes. And if I don't get anything, I'm gonna eat one of these squid that I have. I only have two, but I'm gonna eat one of them and then start trolling for halibut with the other one. I just wanna taste, you know? I just wanna get a little taste what it is oh here we go oh, i think i might have one yes 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 yeah oh oh geez biggest one yet yeah my biggest one yet look at that ah oh i inked my hand dude what look at that that's a nice one that's a really nice one oh perfect eating here Hey, I uh, got in a good school of mackerel here. Oh, nice. All right, I'm 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 down for mac I'm down for mackerel. I just got one more squid here, but I'll, I'll head your way because I'm kind of down for mackerel too. All right, well, Adam got some mackerel up there, and I know you guys have been wanting to see a mackerel catch and cook, so I think 
I'm gonna head up there where Adam is. I'm right, gonna switch it up and go for mackerel. So I recently got this little pouch right here. Keeps all your uh, all your rigs nice and organized. See, rigs ready to go. Let me put on this sabiki rig. I have one right here, ready to go. All right, sabiki on. A little fuzzy thing came off the mic, so it might be a little windy. You know what, guys? I'm really hungry, so I'm actually gonna eat a squid right now. Eat at least just one of them. I think I'm gonna eat the big one. I'm gonna eat them real fresh. I'm gonna just cut them up, a little bit of soy sauce, boom, just like that. Live squid, beautiful. Here we go. Let's try, buddy. Boom, cut them off right there. Boom. Take the inside out. Just throw that in the ocean. He's got the feather right here. Look at the tentacles still moving. Crazy, right? Flip to this side. We gotta take the skin off. Just slightly score it. Bam, look at that. That should come off beautifully and you can just cut the cut the end right there look at this guy still squirming around just have to take the beak out has the beak right there that's the teeth and the rest is all edible just gonna cut it cut uh, a few of the tentacles off there, you slice that part. Oh yes, and I brought my plate. All right, let's try this. Fresh squid, I don't have my chopsticks, but here it is. I'm just gonna try it by itself. Just got three more. Adam's catching a lot of mackerel right now. Mm. Whoa, whoa. Oh, whoa, that's good. Oh, I love squid. Hold on. I'm going to make it better. All he needs, a little lime juice. Look at this. Still moving. Look at that. Ooh, lime juice. And a tiny bit of sea salt. And that's going to be delicious right there. A little tiny bit of sea salt. Mm. Oh, dude, that is so good. Fresh squid, practically alive. Practically live squid. All right, I'm gonna put a little soy sauce in here. Dunk it in a little soy sauce. Look at that. Oh. Oh, baby. Oh, that is so fresh. <laughs> Jeez, that is delicious. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. Texture is amazing. I can eat so much of this. Yeah, I really want to do. Oh, I got a fish. I got a fish. Nice mackerel. It was like a nice mackerel. Two mackerel. Look at that. Yahoo! Put these guys in the cooler. Got mackerel too. Hey! Got mackerel while I'm eating. <laughs> Let me just finish this squid and I'll take care of this uh, mackerel behind me. Oh. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Wow. It's soft on the outside and then it just kind of has this firm snap to it, almost a little bite to it. And the flavor is very mild. No fishiness, 
doesn't really it's very mild and it's delicious that's so good oh my god i want to eat this i want to eat the other squid and with lime juice a little sea salt and then put a little soy sauce too that's perfect <laughs> oh i want more squid i wish i caught more squid i have two more should i eat them right now or should i use them for bait catch halibut hmm. Hmm. well i got a couple mackerel too so let me take care of the mackerel really quick oh i got another one right away right away Oh, that's a jack smelt. Gosh darn it. Oh, look at that. Oh my god, my sabiki is full. And these are tiny. Why are these so small? <laughs> tiny mackerel. These are good bait. Huh, this would be perfect for bait. That squid is so good. Since I have two more, I'm going to eat one more and then just use one for bait. And then I have mackerel for backup bait anyways. So, <laughs> I'm going to eat another one right now. Squid time. There you go. I'm just going right there. Cut down. Boom. And it's pretty much done there. Open them up. There we go. That's the beak out. Just score it like that. And take that skin off. Done. And I'm just going to slice them three pieces. Let's do that. Little lime juice. Little lime juice. Look at them. Like I said, practically alive. Cheers, guys. Wow, that is so good. Oh, oh I love squid. Mm. Mm. All right, time to fish for some halibut. That's a nice one. Oh, my last squid, using it for live bait. And I'm just going to be trolling slowly, slowly, around 40 feet. Squid is so sustainable, and I think it's a good time to reference uh, the Monterey Bay Aquarium, since I'm right here. Monterey Bay Aquarium has a seafood watch, and squid is on top of the, top of the list, basically. Even mackerel, too. Very, both very sustainable seafoods that you can eat, um, you know, all year long, and it's going to be sustainable. There's so many of them out here. Um, I mean, I didn't catch many today, but you know, squid are abundant just in general. If you're thinking about doing what I just did, but with market squid, like the ones you buy at the market, uh, I probably wouldn't do it with the ones you buy at the market. Those are, these, the color difference is so significant. The one I ate is so clear. You can just literally see through it. The ones in the market, everything, even in the, um, where it's not frozen, it's still they it was frozen and then they frost defrost it and put it there so those aren't fresh either all those you know have a smell to it, it really smells fishy but the, these squid nothing at all but so if you're gonna eat it like that it has to be fresh caught like this uh, yeah so don't don't think about doing it from the squid you buy at the market I felt like oh i got a fish on right here i got a fish on i think I think I have a fish on. Got a halibut. Little one. Tiny guy. Oh no, my squid! That's the best bait out here. Damn, I lost it. Lost the squid. Pretty little halibut. Not a keeper. Keeper has to be at least 22 inches. So that was way undersized. I'm getting pushed by the current that way, but I want to go up that way. I probably drifted like a mile. It's going to be hard work to get back. Ah. Uh.
All right, now that we have these beautiful mackerel straight from the ocean, I wanna show you guys how we prepare mackerel when we make sushi. I'm gonna show you this traditional method of preparing saba for sushi. Saba is mackerel in Japanese, okay? So let's get started. First, we're gonna fillet these just like any other fish, all right? And mackerel is one of the easiest fish to fillet in my opinion. So if you're just getting into filleting fish, you can start with mackerel. It's a really good place to start. It's uh, really easy and forgiving, okay? So I'll show you how to do that. We're gonna first take the head off. So right behind the fin, towards the head, just chop down the other side, same thing. That's the head. And we're gonna fillet this like almost any other fish, all right? Turn it around. Now the back. You're just gonna poke your knife all the way through. And, all right, there you go. Now you have that beautiful fillet there. I'm gonna do the other side as well. Flip it over, we're gonna do the back side. And this side. Now look at this, there's that hole. Put your knife in the hole. Just like that. I'll show you a real fast, a faster way to do it too. So same thing, take the head off. Backside with the head toward to my right, okay? We're not gonna turn it this time. Just gonna do like, that insert my knife right here bam just like that turn it around I'm gonna just give it one score turn it around bam and done that's it mackerel is a really good place to start your filleting journey so if you are interested in wanting to get into fillet start with that try it out all right now let me show you what we do here for sushi get some kind of sheet pan or anything that you can put your mackerel on first we're gonna salt it so heavy amount of salt and we're just gonna place these fillets down even though this is a fresh mackerel the meat the flesh is already breaking down so in order to firm the flesh we have to salt cure And I have one more piece, so I'm going to do this as well. Typically, we do a salt cure for about one hour. But because these mackerel are pretty small and they're in good condition because they're fresh, uh, we're not going to do a whole hour. We're going to do just 40 minutes. Okay, so we're going to leave this. And I'm going to put this in the cooler, leave it for 40 minutes, and it will come back to it. So one thing I've been meaning to talk about is the cutting board that I use. Uh, some of you have been asking about it. So this is the type of cutting board you see in most sushi restaurants. It's high quality synthetic material and it's uh, really, really good for your knives and you can clean it easily. No warpage, you know, it doesn't bend at all when you, when you wash it with hot water uh, and it's pretty heavy as well. So I'll leave a link in the description if you guys, you know, want to get one of these, but yeah, it's, uh, this one I believe is $160, and this is the extra large size uh, for the link that I have. So it's about 23 inches, I believe, to really make a difference for your knives. Uh, and just the surface that you cut on, just prep, prepping veg and everything, it's just so much, it feels, feels good to cut on, all right? Now it's been 40 minutes, and uh, we have the macro here, so it's ready to go. This should be pretty firm. You can see the skin kind of you know, wrinkle up a little. Um, yeah, I think that should be enough time. We're gonna wash all the salt off and we'll go from there. Next step for making macro sushi is we have to do a vinegar cure. All right, so first salt cure, then vinegar cure. Normally do about 25 minutes of vinegar. And uh, since this macro is small, I'm just gonna go 15 minutes. I just have regular rice vinegar and we're gonna use this container and uh, put it all in here. Oh, 
fully covered in vinegar just like that and we'll let this go for about uh, 10 to 15 minutes but normally if it's a, a bigger one I would go 25 minutes all right guys this is looking good it's been about 15 minutes so we're gonna take them out of the vinegar maybe we'll go a little longer looks like it needs a little bit more time so we'll go we'll go five more minutes actually yeah that looks better there you go and I'm just gonna do a pad dry if it doesn't fly away so you notice that I kept the rib cage on uh, still during that whole process and now we're gonna take all that off the rib cage pin bones and skin all right we're gonna take the rib cage off there we go these are bone picking tweezers uh, if you want some I'll leave a link in the description too so and it should be fairly easy to take the pin bones out of this fish now gotta take the skin off so in order to do the skin so you can start with these tweezers again lift the skin a bit you can literally just peel it off with your hand another way you can do it is you put it down use the back of your knife and run the back of your knife down the down the skin and it comes right off as well so if I cut straight like this it's gonna be too small so I have to angle it to be right there See? and that's that's perfect size for nigiri let me show you how I would cut for sashimi sashimi is cutting for sashimi be really easy um, so I'm just gonna make a couple scoring score cuts maybe three score along the fish and all I'm gonna do is cut straight down right here bam 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 little pieces very nice and oily fish with the skin up or you can go skin down as well just like we did the nigiri pieces we're gonna cut it thinner though thinner than nigiri and then we can fold it over just like this I'm gonna score each each piece typically yeah for Saba down the middle just one time is actually really nice sushi rice I have my water let's make some nigiri all right if you want to uh, learn how to make nigiri I have a little sushi course on how to make nigiri so check that video out if you want a very thorough in-depth how-to all right we're gonna plate this plate it up let's throw these guys in the back these guys in the front put a little side of wasabi right here traditionally for these silver skin fish like mackerel like the stronger flavor ones we generally use uh, grated ginger and green onion oh man it's so windy but like this bam all right guys we're done here's the plate of my mackerel sushi so these ones here have the grated ginger and uh, scallions these ones have the chopped wasabi and we have some sashimi on the side as well um, I forgot to bring soy sauce but you know what this is actually good by itself like this all right so let's eat it that's nice huh macro sushi mm. 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 Mm -mm -mm. 
That's my first time having mackerel in a long time. I actually haven't had saba in a while. Yeah, that's good. That grated ginger kicks through that strong flavor, oily flavor of the mackerel perfectly. Mm, so good. And if you have grated ginger, you don't really need wasabi. So that's why I didn't put wasabi on that one. So let's try the one with the wasabi. Mmm, 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 mmm. Yeah, Jocelyn's not a fan of mackerel. She just ate one, but she said it's it's fine, but uh, there's still a faint kind of, it's a strong flavored fish, you know? Traditionally, mackerel was the, one of the main fish that was served in sushi. It's good. It has a nice oiliness. I wouldn't say it's fishy. I don't know, some people say it's fishy, but I wouldn't call it fishy. It just uh, has a little more flavor, you know? It has a depth of flavor. Um, let me try my sashimi. Mm. Delicious. I love the nigiri. Mm. Mm. I think I like it with ginger and scallions more. That's my lunch. Uh, if you guys like the video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. All right. Peace. Yeah, yeah. It's not just Jocelyn that doesn't like, you know, these kind of fish. Working as a sushi chef and serving people, there's a lot of people that come through and and then I ask them, you know, any allergies or any kind of dietary restrictions, they always, a lot of people will say, like, oh, please, no mackerel. But it's very common in the U.S. But in Japan, you know, in Japan, it's a very uh, common fish that people like, you know, generally. But in the U.S., it's a common fish that people don't like. That's good. I don't know. That's tasty to me.